In this video, we're diving into the crucial aspect of 3D printing, the often overlooked yet absolutely essential top layers. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just getting started in the world of 3D printing, understanding the significance of top layers can make a world of difference in the quality and durability of your prints. So let's peel back the layers and explore why top layers matter. In the world of 3D printing, achieving a flawless top layer is crucial for producing high quality prints. The top layer is the final surface of the print and can greatly impact the overall aesthetics and strength of the printed model. However, many 3D printing enthusiasts struggle with common issues such as pillowing, gaps, and roughness on the top layer. We're going to use Creality Print and explore some various techniques and settings to overcome these challenges and achieve top layers that are great in your 3D prints. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your ultimate destination for all of your PCB needs. Whether you're a hobbyist or professional engineer, PCBWay has got you covered. PCBWay does more than printed circuit boards and assemblies. They also offer CNC cutting and 3D printing. With state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities, cutting-edge technology, and a commitment to quality, PCBWay is ready to help with all of your prototyping needs. Visit PCBWay.com and elevate your ideas into reality. Now, to get started, I'm going to make a baseline print using Creality Print's default settings so we can judge our progress. I'll be using a Creality Ender 3 V3 SE for the printing. Occasionally, I'll do a duplicate print on a Creality K1 Max just for comparison. All right, I've rambled on long enough. Let's open Creality Print, load a model, and start pushing some plastic. Okay, so I have my baseline test piece, and it's just simply a 75 millimeter square, six millimeters tall, a few radiuses on the ends. This should be good enough for getting some top layers. What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the default shell settings for wall count of two, top and bottom layers of four each, top surface skin zero. We're not changing anything. Let's go ahead and we'll slice this up. We're going to print it and this is where we'll start. I'm not seeing anything bad that stands out. Nothing particularly great about it either. It's what I would expect from a baseline print with stock settings. I can see the infill pattern. Typically, this is called pillowing, and it's easily solved. But it's a good example of why the top and bottom layer value of 4 in Creality Print should be viewed more as a minimum value instead of a default. So let's go ahead and jump back into Creality Print, make a few adjustments to the shell, and we'll do another test print. Okay, so I'm going to come back in. And I'm going to make a few simple changes to see if I can't get rid of that pillowing. I'm going to open up my settings. And again, I'm just sticking with the shell. I'm going to change my wall count to three. I'm going to change my top layers to six. And my bottom layers also to six. Typically, I keep my top and bottom layers the same thickness. Not always, but most of the time. I'll leave everything else as it is. Let's save this. We're going to slice it. We'll print this and see what we get. Now, looking at this, when compared to the previous print with four top layers, I'm seeing an overall improvement in the quality. It looks smoother. It definitely feels smoother. And I'm not seeing the pillowing like we did in the previous print. While I was at it, I did an additional print. This one just has two top layers and you can see how bad the quality is the infill is clearly visible some serious pillowing, pillowing going on now a general unwritten rule when it comes to layers top layers more is better actually thicker is better keep your layer thickness in mind when you're figuring out how many top layers you want my personal guideline is that I want my top layer thickness to be the same as my wall thickness. So if I'm using three walls at 0.4 millimeters each for a total thickness of 1.2 millimeters, then I'll use six top layers 
at 0.2 millimeters each for a total of 1.2 millimeters. It's just my personal rule, and as we know, rules were meant to be broken. So, okay, let's get back to the part with the three walls, six top layers. I think I can jump back into Creality Print, and I think I can improve this further. Okay, so I'm going to make a few simple changes here. Let's go back to our prepare. And we're going to open up the dialog to edit our settings. In the shell, I'm going to leave my wall count and top and bottom layers as they were. The top surface skins, I'm going to change that to one. And I also want to turn on my advanced settings up here. And now you'll notice we get some other options we weren't seeing, such as the top and bottom pattern, uh, the initial layer pattern. And we have one here for top surface skin pattern. Your choices are concentric, lines, or zigzag. I usually have mine at lines. You can pick any one of those three that you like. They all work equally well. Um, all right, the top surface skin line directions and also the top bottom line directions. These will do the same thing for you. Uh, you want to keep those brackets. You always need those. But I'm going to change mine to... 0, 90, just for a demonstration here. And I'm going to go ahead and save this, and we're going to slice real quick. Now, you notice the directions of my top surface skin. It's going left to right. And then as I drop down, everything's back to normal, the way we're used to seeing it. Now, if I would come in here, back to our settings, and I would change this to 0.90 and we slice that and now we scroll down through the layers you can see we're going from left to right then top to bottom left to right top to bottom they alternate like that so it's not anything I use I can't think of any case where I might have used it I'm sure I did sometime but uh, just knowing that it's out there for you, you can change that. Uh, let's go 45 and 90. Let's leave it like that and see what happens. You can save that. We'll slice our top. Our skin is still at uh, 0, 090. And then we're going 45 and 90. 45, 90. You can see how it alternates back and forth. So I'm going to go back and set them both to their default settings. And we'll make a few more changes here. But just knowing that you can do that, if you ever have an instance where you might, it's there. Don't be afraid to experiment with these settings. Okay. I um, believe that's everything in the shell. That I want to modify here. Now we're going to go over to the extruder. Click on the extruder. And we have this one here. Top surface skin line width. I'm going to set mine to 0.24. And the reason I pick 0.24. Is a general rule of thumb. Is make it 60% of the diameter of your nozzle. So I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. 60% of 0.4 is 0.24. And that's going to give us a smaller but tighter finish on the top of our model. And I believe that is everything. I do want to make one more point here. Uh, notice that it is currently at 0.24. I'm going to come back to the shell. If I change my top surface skin layers to zero and I come back to extruder, you notice that the line width for the top skin is no longer available. So you'll want to add the top skins first. And we'll go back to extruder. And there we have it again. Um, I believe that's everything I want to change here. I believe it's looking pretty good. One last note, speed. If you're having problems with your top layers or any of the layers for that matter, like the top surface skin, if you struggle with this, you can go ahead and change that speed right here. 
Now, the general rule of thumb, again, is it should be half of what your top bottom speed is. It's an unwritten rule, it's a guideline. The 3D printing police will not kick in your door if you pick a different number. Sometimes I'll use 50 for my top bottom speed and I'll go to 20 or 15 for my top surface skin speed. For this print, I'm gonna leave it at 25 and we'll go ahead and save this. We'll slice it up and see how we do. Now that is looking smooth. I like what I see here. Just by making the topmost layer or skin a little bit smaller in width, we've added a whole new dynamic to the appearance of our finished part. That looks pretty good. Now, if you're having problems with the top surface skin, you can go ahead and slow down the print speed for just the top surface layers. Now, I got just one more setting I want to demonstrate. So let's go back into Creality Print and make a quick update to our print settings and we'll hit print. All right, we're going to try something here and I'm going to come back. I'm going to hit repair. I'm going to edit my settings again and we're going back to shell. And this time we're going to go right down towards the bottom and I'm going to enable ironing. And I'll be the first to admit, ironing isn't one of my favorite things. I, I just never liked it. Um, we're going to turn on iron only the highest layer. That's all I can iron in this particular case because it's a flat model. Now, if it was, say, a model of a staircase, if I had only highest layer checked, that means the very top step. All those other steps getting up there, they're going to be as normal. So if you want them all ironed, you go ahead and turn that off. In fact, I'm going to leave it this way for now. Let's go ahead, save this, re-slice, and we'll do a quick print and see what we get. Now, that looks pretty good. It's nice and smooth, almost like glass. A lot of times, I'll end up having some surface scarring from the flow, flow rate being a little too high. If you experience this, just reduce your top surface flow rate a little bit to achieve the look you're looking for. But to me, that looks pretty good. There you have it. Better looking top layers and it wasn't difficult to achieve. Now, we've only touched the surface of what we can do with top layers. No pun intended. Eh, maybe a little. Don't be afraid to mess around with those settings. Make some test prints. I do it all the time. Sometimes I get great results, and sometimes, well, let's just say I learned a way not to do it. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down below in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.